colors. This game means more to me than probably a majority of Sonic fans. Back when the game was released, it was praised by fans and critics alike, seeing 9s and 80s across the board on GameSpot, IGN, Metacritic. And then we have Now, where people are comparing this game to Sonic 06. WHAT?! Sonic Colors is a game that, while many despise nowadays, I respect and enjoy fondly. It is well deserving of those scores that it was given back in 2010. The game was released for the Nintendo Wii along with the Nintendo DS version. Releasing late into the life of the said consoles, Sega had to go out with a bang. And did they? Well, I mean, yeah. The game surprisingly gets right into the action, no cutscene or anything. The first two acts just happen without context, and I kind of like that. You don't have to worry about skipping any story if you want to get right into the game. After those acts, we get right into the story. Sonic and Tails are sneaking into Dr. Robotnik's all-new amusement park. Of course, with it being Robotnik, Sonic and Tails feel like the amusement park is kinda SUCK! And with these innocent little aliens called Wisps being held in capsules, they're right to be concerned. So they look around the park to try and find Robotnik, and they need to get to the other five planets he's using for his plan and destroy the chains connecting them to the source of the park. As we go through the game, it's quite obvious that this game has a... different tone. With Sega hiring new writers at the time, Ken Pontak and Warren Graff, it was obvious that the stories were going towards a different direction. In this case, they were taken into a lighter tone compared to the previous games like Black Knight or Unleashed. Now, you'd expect these guys' track records to be something like Super Y, Special Agent Oso, and Teen Titans Go, right? No. It's garbage. The story is actual garbage. <laughs> now, let me ask you, do you enjoy hilarious body odor jokes and burp humor? That was a rhetorical question, please don't answer that. There's not much of the story after the third boss. Sonic and Tails go to the rest of the planets to destroy the chain, Sonic says a few funnies, and now I need to talk about how much I don't like Roger in this game, great. Listen, as much as people hate to hear this, I think Roger is garbage in this game in Generations. It was his first go with the character and he got way better over time, but I just don't hear Sonic in these lines. He sounds more like an older version of JFK from Clone High than a Sonic the Hedgehog, what? even after these two games. Except for Sonic Boom, that doesn't count. I see him as the weakest Sonic of the Big Five. He's a fantastic voice actor, but he's just not Sonic. However, I need to be very careful with how I say things, because I could easily get cancelled on Twitter.com. Again. Yep, that's right. If you say anything negative about Roger now, people will act like you punched Grandma in the face. He's not dead! The other characters in this game aren't that bad though. Kate Higgins' Tails isn't bad here. Although I prefer his later voice actress in Sonic Boom that I've refused to pronounce, as I'll most likely mispronounce it, get comments about it, and have a stroke. Mike Pollock, of course, plays Robotnik, and despite his shady presence on Twitter, he's still a great Robotnik. The voice actors overall here are not too bad. If you remove Sonic from the picture, everything's pretty great. The game plays fantastically. It's lower than Generations and Unleashed, but that doesn't really make it any worse. In fact, the stages are far less linear than the other boost games. Does this make Colors the best boost game? You've got your standard boost, slide, and all that, but now Sonic has a double jump that actually works. That actually works! I love how when you move to another direction when you double jump, you keep your momentum. It's wonderful. I love it. The level design is very different from the other boost games. Instead of having boost to win sections where you hold one button and press another sometimes, you have full-on platforming sections that are both 2D and 3D. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't hate these. Sure, some of them can be kind of bland and some of them are Starlight like Carnival Act 6, but I enjoy playing a majority of these most of the time. A majority of them. Some people say, ah, oh, this game feels blocky and it's too much like Mario. Okay, first off, you're the same people who gave Crash Bandicoot 3 a 9 on Metacritic, so shut up. And second, it being like Mario was sort of intentional. The head of Sonic Team Takashi Izuka has stated in interviews that this game was meant to appeal to Mario fans, bringing them into the franchise. And hey, it worked. I hate Sonic now. People also complain that there's just too much 2D in these stages. I don't care. Just because the game is mostly 2D doesn't make it bad. Of course, I would love these stages to be more 3D, don't get me wrong. But these stages being 2D isn't bad. In fact, some of the later acts in each zones being shorter make it a lot easier to just pick them up and play for a moment. This would be an incredible design choice if it was actually intentional. Later into the game's development, Sonic Team noticed that the game was pretty short. The stages were around the same length as Unleashed stages, but there weren't enough of them to be considered a full package. It just fell too short. They could just add hub worlds and collectibles to extend the game, but Unleashed got flack for that and it could easily kill the game critically. Izuka said that this was pretty much Sonic's last chance. After 06 and Unleashed flopped, if this failed, it would have been over. But they made a decision that could possibly save the game from being just a little bit too short. Splitting the levels in half. 
The three planned acts for each zone were split apart to make a total of six acts per zone, which explains why some acts suddenly end and start where the previous ones left off. For more information about this, I'd highly recommend checking out this video by SK Marek about the original game structure. He goes into far more detail than I ever could. The original three-act structure actually still lives on in the DS version for some reason. Yes, of course, the Wii version was too short, but the DS version was just fine in length. The Burst Wisps made everything work fine over there. Sonic Color's main gimmick is the Wisps. These are small aliens robotic colds and capsules to power his amusement park. When Sonic saves one of them, they give him his power. There are eight different Wisps that you can use in this game. White Boost, Cyan Laser, Orange Rocket, Yellow Drill, Pink Spikes, Green Hover, Purple Frenzy, and the Blue Cube. Why did they relegate the boost to being powered by Wisp instead of rings? Well, I think it's better this way. Don't get me wrong, I was perfectly fine with the boost being tied to the rings, but come on, this is way less overpowered. Now, forces ruin this by making the Wisp max out your boost, but let's not worry about that! Here, the boost can be maxed out with around three White Wisp capsules, making the boost more of a tool that you need to use responsibly, rather than just a hold to win button. The Cyan Laser lets you zoom right to an area. You can bounce off walls, go into this tunnel thing, or use these crystals to zigzag to an area with red rings or a quicker way to complete the stage. The Orange Rocket is exactly what it sounds like. It's a rocket that launches straight up into the air. The yellow drill allows you to, well, drill underground and reach areas inaccessible by normal means. The pink spike sticks to walls and allows you to spin dash in a 3D game for the first time since Sonic 06. The green hover floats in the air and light speed dashes across a trail of rings. The purple frenzy can eat literally anything in sight, sometimes opening secret passageways, and the blue cube turns blue rings into blue cubes and vice versa. These are well-made power-ups that don't overstay their welcome or slow down your game when you want it the least. The Wisps give the game fantastic replay value, and I would say, the best replay value in the entire franchise. Take this for example, the Cube Wisp. You're in Sweet Mountain doing your ravage platforming when you see these blue cubes. You then question to yourself, what are these for? Can they be activated somehow? Can they give you access to the secret red rings? Well, once you get to Starlight Carnival, you can gain access to the Cube Wisp, and it's revealed what exactly these cubes are for. Once you find out what they do, you can go back to Sweet Mountain and get that red ring blocked by the blue cube with your newly found power. It's things like this that make me love the Wisp more than I have before, and make me want to yell at Sega for thinking that Sonic Forces is a good idea. This game looks incredible. Even with the Wii using, at the time, 11-year-old power at that point, Sega was able to make a game that looked just as good as a 360 game. When you go to the fourth zone, Planet Wisp, for the first time, you just want to imagine running through it in HD without playing the Generations version because no one wants to play that version. The third zone, Starlight like Carnival, looks amazing with all the battleships in the background, the statues, and the music. I want to see more of this. The way the camera dynamically moves depending on where Sonic is in the flow of gravity, I love it! I also enjoy the tone and the scenery of these stages. I love this part in Aquarium Park Act 6, where you have this underwater 2D section that's pretty annoying, and once you finish it, you get this nice straightaway where you can just run, relax, and enjoy the view for just a few seconds, and boom, you're right back into the game. This was definitely not intentional, but I love it so much. It just gives you this breath of fresh air for just a few moments, then boom, you're right back into the game. Sega must have loved it too because they took the straightaway portion and made that entire game. But that also comes the music. Music in Sonic is widely agreed upon to be at least good in most cases, and Colors is no exception to this rule. Sonic Forces is though. Each piece gives you the vibe of the zone you're in. Tropical Resort sounds laid back and upbeat. Sweet Mountain is pretty fast and sounds like I'm about to get diabetes just listening to it, oh my! Planet Wisp relaxing but upbeat rhythm makes me forget about the polluted pink liquid that could kill me at any moment. Aquarium Park obviously has that aquatic feel that energizes you for the level ahead. Asteroid Coaster's heavy rock instruments give you that final stage feeling. All of these tracks are sublime and fit each stage more than I could imagine. 
unlike Sonic Forces. After Sonic and Tails break the chain in Asteroid Coaster, one of the parts of Robotnik's machine begins destroying the park, and the only thing Sonic and Tails can do is run. We get a secret final level, Terminal Velocity. It's a run downhill with only two acts and a fantastic track to boot. After the first act, it's time for the final boss. All of the energy Robotnik was using for his park was to charge his latest creation, the Nega Wisp Armor. It uses all the moves that you've learned throughout the game, and you'll need quick thinking to beat him. After a few hits, you start to free Wisp from Robotnik's clutches, eventually gathering all kinds of Wisps together to make one big boost destroying Robotnik's machine. But the park's still blowing up, so there's no time to waste. We get the second act, and Sonic is running for his life. Well, now he's dead. Ah, oh, dang it. Well, after getting war flashbacks from watching Sonic run down a straight line, I started to think about Sonic Colors as a whole, and yeah, it's the best boost title. Sonic Colors is the best game in the boost genre. Yeah, I said it. Unleash had the Werehog, Generations had Classic Sonic, and Forces existed. Colors doesn't have any of that. It's just Sonic. I'm not saying that any of those are bad except for Forces, but not many people constantly go back to the Werehog or Classic Sonic. They just go back to the modern stages to play for a moment, then move on to their day. Colors cuts all of that fat and just does the boost stages. No more, no less. Also, if you're arguing that the 2D sections are this game's Werehog, I, I don't know what to tell you, buddy. Go play Sonic Adventure. Sonic Colors, while it may be hated by the fan base, is loved by me and a majority of the general public. You can tell that Sonic Team genuinely cared and put their heart and soul into this project. They wanted to see Sonic continue to grow, see him thrive, possibly rival Mario once again, and I love it. They didn't look back at their past mistakes. They didn't give up on the franchise after the critical flop of Unleashed, and they weren't gonna let go now just before the 20th anniversary, and I just realized that those are lyrics of the game's main theme. This makes so much more sense now. For every step back Colors takes, it takes three leaps forward, oozing with passion and wonder all around. This game means so much to me, and I'll never forget it for that. And that is why I believe that Colors is the best boost game.